Ripja's favorite web novel suddenly became their reality. Being the sole person who has read Three Ways to Survive the Apocalypse, or TWSA for short, until the end, he felt like he was the only one who sees what's going on in his world to be based on fiction. Although he had managed to gather allies to fight alongside him, he still felt quite alone. It's still different to have someone who sees things in the same way that he does. The difference is like between close friends in school who aren't into anime or manga and online friends who can fanboy or fangirl alongside you. It's really a different connection with people who enjoy reading or watching the same thing. But Dukja didn't experience having that kind of connection since he didn't have such a friend in the first place, before the apocalypse at least. So of course, when he met the other prophets for the first time, Dukja felt excitement in being able to converse with individuals that know about TWSA like he does. But unfortunately for him, they couldn't keep up with him since they are just too far behind. The difference between less than a hundred chapters to over 3,000 chapters is enormous. Moreover, they are even lacking in the skills department. And lastly, none of them had even bonded with him to the point that he would consider them as close friends. But Han Soo Young was different. Similar to the other renouncers, he first met her as an enemy. But unlike them, she was the one who had read the most among all other renouncers. She was the only one who can relate to him even beyond the fourth scenario, making her the closest to how far he had read. She is not lacking when it comes to talent and fighting abilities either. She even has more mana than him making him jealous. <laughs> she is reliable enough that he can count on her to assist him in his plans and missions and even protect him from danger. So as what Dukja had said himself, even though he finds her annoying, having her by his side makes him relieved. Being around her makes him forget the loneliness of being alone. As someone who had read plenty of TWSA chapters like Dokja, Soyoung makes use of her knowledge to her advantage in order to survive and even save the apocalyptic world. With that, she has also been making preparations for upcoming scenarios so that things will go smoothly later. When Dukja does his preparations, sometimes he doesn't explain to his friends the purpose of his plans. Usually, it's because he doesn't have the time to do so, but still, it's lucky for him that his comrades trust him so much, or else he will just appear to be doing crazy things, like he wants first impression of him. But with Suyong, he doesn't really need to explain much at all. It's easier for her to determine why he does or says some things because she knows. They may be doing things in different methods sometimes but they aim for the same thing. And no matter how far Dokja goes, she catches on sooner than later. She finds ways in catching up to his pace. Like during that time when he is talking with Laikaon, she immediately purchased a skill to understand what they are talking about. It's not something he taught her, as it's something she already knew like he did. Anyway, because of that, she didn't need to wait for him to give her a summary of what was discussed since she was able to follow along real time. Actually, 
Jung Hyuk is also among those that can catch on to Dokja's acts. He also knows the future events after all, thanks to his regressions. However, the perspective of a character from the novel is still different from a reader's perspective. This is why Dokja and Soo-young see Jung Hyuk in the same way. Both of them even think that Jung Hyuk is the type who would not hesitate to kill. They didn't have very pleasant memories with a psychopath either. <laughs> but despite all that, they still offer their assistance to Jung Hyuk. It's because they both know that they need the protagonist to survive. They do their best even if Jung Hyuk scares the hell out of them. <laughs> They have a lot of struggles dealing with Jung Hyuk. It's easier for them to piss him off compared to making him cooperate. What a complicated relationship. <laughs> well, they claim that they are just being nice because they need something from the guy, their actions speak otherwise. Soo Young may have been rejecting the task of taking care of Jung Hyuk she still helped Dokja take care of the guy by finding him that spoon. And if the situation calls for it, she will be looking after Jung Hyuk anyway. So, no matter how much Jung Hyuk freaks them out, they cannot ever leave him alone. They are both the types who care for Jung Hyuk but won't ever admit it. <laughs> Having the same perspective on how they see the world doesn't mean that they have the same opinions as well. Actually, their opinions clash very, very often. They often have these little debates when it comes to literature devices and tropes. Knowing that Suyong is a writer, Dokja uses their arguments to rant about the things which many writers do. Like many readers who had read tons of books, Dukja is quite sick of overused tropes. He even went as far as over-talking her when she was about to tell him a typical story. So imagine his excitement when he gets to talk to a writer in person. He has been criticizing her as a writer on every opportunity he gets. But even behind his rants, Dokja also wants to understand why writers do such things. And Suyo is able to satisfy him with that, even though he doesn't agree most of the time. And when she used his favorite web novel as an example of what he hates about, he just ignored it. Oh, Dokja, you and your bias. <laughs> well, aside from those topics, these two also tend to disagree on serious matters, like about dealing with Yu Song. Su Yong is the type who is not afraid to voice out her opinion. But if things aren't going her way, she'll just mumble about it or throw tantrums to express her anger somehow. But once she calms down, she acts as if nothing happened. Perhaps what made her cooperate is because of her contract with Dukja, or because Dukja had guaranteed that he has a way to save the world even while keeping little Yusong alive. Or maybe she actually trusted him that much. She believed that she could rely on him after all. Either way, I think it's more of because she respected his decision. Even Dukja knows that she is not wrong. But she gets along with his decision. So if it's out of respect, it makes sense. Duke just shows respect as well, even if he is technically her boss because of their contract. If there is something she doesn't want to do, he won't force her to do it. Well, at least most of the time, he can be a little bossy to the people who have messed with him. Him being very convinced that Soo Young is a plagiarist just gave him more reasons to bully her. 
he doesn't even treat her gently like how a, uh, well, a gentleman would normally treat girls. I don't think it's because Dogja is no gentleman. I guess it's more of because he doesn't see Suyong as a woman in the first place. Suyong is confirmed to be pretty in universe though, but for Dogja, Suyong is not attractive at all. That's what he claims at least. He also didn't show any attraction towards someone as pretty as Min Ji Won. But unlike with Ji Won, he outright tells Suyong that she's ugly. <laughs> it's like he's more frank with her. Whether that's what he truly thinks or not, he is not scared of hurting her feelings even the slightest. In fact, he enjoys seeing her miserable. This guy is quite sadistic. <laughs> Dukji is generally a nice guy though, especially towards his team. But with Suyong, he is showing his evil side. <laughs> I don't think it's because he's showing his true colors to her though. I think it's more of because he is just able to express another side of himself in front of her. In other words, the gentle Dokja and the bully Dokja are both parts of Dokja. Besides, we have seen Dokja acting like a sassy bully towards the people who have messed with him before. Suyong just happened to be an ally that he also plays with. <laughs> But Suyong is not always the victim in their quarrels. She has her moments too. She laughed so hard when Dokja had been embarrassing himself. She wakes him up on his fantasies when he's being full of himself. My favorite is when she called him crazy for accomplishing something he's very proud of, which is finishing TWSA. <laughs> Interestingly, when Suyong makes fun of Dokja, it usually has something to do with his arrogance and overconfidence. And that's something his friends wouldn't be able to notice easily. And I think it's because she understands him very well, despite their minimal interactions. Suyong had typed this line on her phone. Just because you read a lot doesn't mean you know people any better. Who else could she be referring to? Although Dukja had already realized it himself sometime later, out of habit, he still acts like he always knows better than everyone. He's the omniscient reader after all. But Suyong criticizes him when he is being too arrogant or doing something that is not practical. She corrects him when he does mistakes or doesn't act when he should. She is indirectly helping him to become a better person. She also manages to help him out during crucial moments like on this scene. When people are pressuring Dogja once again to become their caretaker, it's really bad that he is also being blamed for the cruel things that those people are doing. He was feeling stressed and is pretty much about to express his frustration but Suyong came to his rescue. Thanks to her, things shifted to his favor very quickly. Everything that Suyong had been telling those side characters are what Dukja also thinks and wants to say anyway. But he couldn't put them into words. But she got the words out of his mouth. She was like his spokesperson. She stood up for his sake. And that was such a big deal for him. It reminded him that none of it was his fault. She had saved him from such a burden. But these two idiots are expert in ruining a moment. Ugh. Anyway, that's not the only time she had helped him. The first time she actually directly helped him was during this scene when Dokja's former office mate was trying to make him think that he's a criminal. 
Dokja was already feeling hurt and traumatized, but our Suyong saved us from the drama by not even letting the guy finish what he's saying as she cuts off his head. <laughs> Dokja was not yet even done reacting to what the guy said, but she already took care of his future stress. Gotta love how she quickly acts on such situations. Soyoung was also there when Dokja encountered his high school bully, and he would have broken down completely if she wasn't there. She reminded him that there's no such thing as a little trauma. And that greatly boosted Dokja's courage to face his fears. It's nice that although she loves teasing Dokja a lot, Soyoung doesn't make fun of him on serious matters. Although her words here seemed like she was joking, it doesn't seem to be a lie that she really was willing to lend him an ear if he wants to speak up his troubles. Coincidentally, she is the first person who not only managed to know about his traumatic high school days, but she also gets a hint about his biggest trauma. She is clearly his emotional outlet, not only on his rants about the little things, but even with his personal problems. He has become so open about his personal life to her. It shows that he finds it very comforting to have her around. He's so comfortable with her that he isn't shy to ask her about his appearance. But of course, Suyong doesn't 100% understand him. But we see her efforts in trying to understand him even better by being very observant of his reactions and asks him about it. I don't remember anyone else who tried to ask him what his goals are. Suyong sure digs deeper. She is very good at noticing when he is not feeling well, mentally, emotionally, and physically. She will be there for him when he is down, and she is capable of protecting him. Of course, Dokja does his best in protecting her as well. He is also doing similar efforts in improving their relationship as he tries to see her in a positive light. After spending time with Suyong, he no longer sees her as a bad person. So it doesn't make sense to him why she became a plagiarist. <laughs> Although he hates plagiarism a lot, he tries to get along with someone he suspects as one because she's going to be useful. Oh, remember when Dokja formed a contract with her because he thinks she will be like a helpful assistant? Well, although her battle skills and intel have indeed been very useful for him, she is in fact far more useful than he thinks. During that time when he was lonely from being separated from his dear friends, it must have been due to instinct that he already knew that he needed her the moment he saw her. As he had said, he didn't rescue her because he's a hero. But even if he's not the savior type, he couldn't stand seeing someone he knows get harmed right in front of him. They had only barely interacted during that time, but he already risked his life for her. He badly wanted her to remain by his side so much that he also put Sang as favor of him at risk. Even Suyong doesn't understand why he is going so far to keep her with him. He has his excuses about why he keeps her around like having someone work for him but it seemed like he is so desperate to get her that he stubbornly chased after her it is like he is not consciously aware about how badly he needs her and he sure needs her all right she had saved him from lots of emotional and mental pain and although she's also being a pain to him 
She also finds it very comforting to have her around. No wonder losing her is a great shock to him. He must have thought he was just hallucinating at first, so he checked her pulse. But after he confirmed that she's really dead, he went back to staring at her corpse again. It's like his mind went blank from too much shock. They aren't close enough for him to feel devastated yet, but losing her still made him at a loss for words. He looked like he lost a part of himself. He was definitely very upset when he realized that Suyong wasn't really dead and just fooled him. Some pranks, even if between friends, are not funny. I think that's the reason why he no longer bothered to pretend to look for her, much to So Young's disappointment. Although Dokje didn't like the idea of Su Young ditching him, it still made sense to him. After all, like what he had said himself, Su Young had very little benefit in sticking around with him, but he doesn't understand why she stayed that long. I think she initially stayed because she does expect to benefit from his success. Our girl is hardworking but also kind of materialistic. But she had stayed much longer than she intended to. And that's simply because she started to worry for Dokja. She stayed with him even on dangerous situations and never abandoned him on crucial moments. There's no denying that she is concerned about his well-being and notices even the little signs of him feeling bad. But of course, even if it's so obvious, the dense Dokja is not going to believe that she cares that much about him. Although he is doing a poor job on it, Dokja did what he could to make her stay. He also worked very hard in keeping her safe and he doesn't like it when she overexerts herself either. Even though he's not going to admit it, there is no denying that he also considers her as part of his precious family. Whether Dokja and Suyong actually care for each other in a romantic sense or just in a platonic way, there is no doubt that although they only shared very few moments together, they had already formed a very strong bond. They may have bickered about a lot of things, but they also get along just as easily. They may also have teased each other a lot, but they also protect each other just as often. It's obvious that they get worried about one another, but of course, they won't admit it. They look so cool when they fight alongside each other. They are so similar and so synchronized. You know, it's like they mirror each other so much that there's something symmetrical in their fight scenes. Sometimes, even their facial expressions look so similar. They get screwed in a similar manner as well. They sometimes look so alike that they are almost like siblings already. Siblings that get into a lot of trouble in particular. These do run away from enemies together. But they also face enemies together. They can stick together whether in peaceful moments or in dangerous situations. For Dukja, in meeting Suyong, he had also found his best friend. Of course, there are going to be plenty of other moments between these chaotic besties in the future. After all, like what Suyong had said, they will be crossing paths again. So, for more videos like this, and to be notified of the latest Omniscient Reader videos from this channel, please subscribe. And for this to spread to more people, likes, shares, and comments, 
will be highly appreciated. Thanks for watching! See you in the next video! Take care!